In this example, we need to use a calculator to find one rational zero, then use synthetic division to find all the zeros of this function here. So I'm using a TI-84 plus silver edition to uh, find the first rational zero. So my calculator is already on. And before I do anything else, I want to look at the mode that I'm in. For most algebra problems, you want everything highlighted on the left. But for graphing, the important one is you're in function mode. So I'm in function mode. Now I need to quit, which is up here. So I have to hit second mode to get back to my home screen. And now to graph, I want to hit the Y equals button. And as you can see, I already have a function that I'm not interested in as Y1. So I'm going to clear it. And now all I need to do is put this function in there. So let's start with 3x cubed. 3. This is my variable key, and since I'm in function mode, when I hit it, it will type in an x. And now to raise to the third power, you use the caret key, which is raising. Notice it put my cursor up in the exponent, and I put a 3, so that is 3x cubed. But notice my cursor's still in the exponent, so I need to arrow over to put my cursor on the main line. Now I need minus 22x squared. This is the minus key. That's the negation key. So this is minus 22x. And then for the squared button, I'm going to use this key because it writes the squared and then puts me down on the main line again. Minus 160x minus 160 zero x minus 96. So there is my function and I hit enter. Does it look correct? 3x cubed minus 22x squared minus 160. Let's just arrow over just to make sure I typed it correctly. Yes, that looks correct. So I'm happy with my function. And now I need to hit the zoom key to start with. We always want to start on zoom standard, which is six. And there is my graph. Not a very pretty graph, but remember all we're trying to do is find the first zero. So it looks like there's one zero here, but it's not on a whole number, somewhere between zero and negative one. But this one looks like it might be at negative four. So I can go to my table function that is in blue. So I hit second table. And here are my x values. Here are my y values. And let's scroll up to find x equals negative 4. Was my function equal to 0 there? Yes, it was. And let me show you one other view from this calculator. So here you can see my function. Here you can see my table value. And here you can see the graph. So I found my first 0 is x equals negative 4. One last thing I can show you is if I get rid of that screen, I can show you all the keystrokes that I went through. So if you need to see those, you can pause the video and look at those. So from the calculator, we found our first zero to be negative four. And now we're going to use synthetic division to find all the other zeros of the function. So with synthetic division, you take your zero, and your zero is the number that goes in the box. And now I need to write the coefficients here of my function. Check, are there any missing terms? I have an x cubed, x squared, x, and a constant. No missing terms. So stripping off my coefficients, I'm going to get 3, negative 22, negative 160, and finally negative 96. Leave a little bit of room, draw your line. So we bring down the 3 as is. 
then multiply 3 times negative 4 and get negative 12. And now we are going to add negative 22 and negative 12. We get negative 34. Repeat. Negative 34 times negative 4 is positive 136. Add negative 160 to positive 136. I get negative 24. And finally, negative 24 times negative 4 is positive 96. Negative 96 plus 96 is 0. Remember, this is the remainder. And we have just shown at this point that x equals negative 4 is, in fact, a 0 of this polynomial. Since when I did the division, I got a remainder of 0. And this is my quotient. Since this, I started out with an x cubed term. This will be an x squared term. And this will be an x term. So my quotient is going to be 3x squared minus 34x minus 24. And so we're going to set that equal to 0 to find our remaining zeros. To see if it factors, let's compare it to ax squared plus bx plus c. a, the coefficient of the x squared, is 3. b is the coefficient of the x, is negative 34. c is the constant term of negative 24. Multiply a times c, 3 times negative 24 is negative 72. I need two numbers that multiply to AC or negative 72 and they need to add to B which is negative 34. Since they multiply to a negative my signs are different. Since they add to a negative the bigger one has to be negative. I could start with 1 times negative 72 that is definitely not going to work because those two do not give me negative 34. They give me negative 71. So 2 goes into 72 36 times. So it's 2 times negative 36. 2 plus negative 36. This is looking good. Those add up to negative 34. So these are not my factors. That's what I'm going to break my middle term down into. So I get 3x squared plus 2x from this one minus 36x minus 24 equals 0. Four terms factor by grouping. The first one just has an x in common. Let's see, it's going to leave me with 3x plus 2. Bring down the middle sign. What do the last two have in common? I think I can pull out a 12. Be careful, I'm pulling out a negative 12. So negative 12 divides into negative 36x 3x times, and negative 12 divides into negative 24 plus 2. This binomial is the same as this one. It's my common binomial factor of 3x plus 2 that you pull in front and it leaves behind x minus 12. So now just set each factor equal to 0. 3x plus 2 equals 0. So 3x equals negative 2 by subtracting 2 from both sides. Divide both sides by 3. So I get x equals negative 2 thirds. And from this one, x minus 12 equals 0. So x equals positive 12. So now we need to list all the zeros of the function. I have negative 2 thirds, positive 12, and negative 4.